Welcome to another episode of Flippin' Rich. Well, Peter, today, you know, what we need to talk about is what makes an actual real estate flip and flip, uh, excuse me, uh, fix and flip an actual deal. Okay. So like, what's the numbers? What are some terminology like that we must use? So, you know, I think we need to start out with the value, right? Yep. So let's talk about a couple different ways you could look at the value of a property. Well, you know, the first thing, let, let's make sure that everybody understands there's different values, right? Mm -hmm. And like when we're doing fix and flips here, we're looking at two two values. We're looking the as is value. Mm -hmm. Now this is well. First of all, let's talk about the values. So first, we're looking at we're looking at as is value, and then mm -hmm. we're also looking at the value once we fixed it up, which mm -hmm. is called ARV. And I know we're going to get into that, right? Now, interestingly enough, the ARV always has to be higher than what we're buying it for, right? Mm -hmm. But if you think about it, and this kind of is a little bit counterintuitive, sometimes the as is value is not where we're even, sometimes we're even paying more than it's actually worth because the money is made on the ARV value. Now, here's the one time where it's good to have a high as is value. Mm -hmm. It gives you more options. Gotcha. Right? So if we're buying like a house for 100,000, right? And as, as is only 80,000, but if we put like 50 into it, it's 210,000. It's a deal, right? Mm -hmm. But it's only a deal if we spend $50,000, which makes it much more risky, which makes a lot of time. But let's say we're buying the same house for $100,000, and the as-is value is $120,000. Well, that's a lot less risky deal, right? Because mm -hmm. we know in that deal we're going to be fine. Even if we got to dump it, get rid of it. Well, I mean, for somebody that's new, and let's just say, God forbid, something happens, and they can't get the financing for the rehab, and they have no choice, but to just turn around and sell it as is, at least they don't lose money and might even be able to make, you know, eight or seven, seven or eight thousand. Or think about it, like you're thinking it's fifty thousand. It's not a matter you let's say you get the financing, right? Uh-huh. And then and this actually happened to me before. I was oh, you remember this huge house member on Lake uh, Lanier? The the the, the 20, oh, yeah, yeah, the one in Gainesville. The one in Gainesville. So you remember, so we were gonna do this deal, right? We were mm -hmm. buying it for like one point one million. And the rehab was a million, and the ARV was like, I forgot, three or four million. So initially, it looked good, right? Mm -hmm. But then the contractor bailed on us, right? The contract bailed on us. And so, you know, you think about it, it's not just whether you get money or not, and you could do the deal. A lot of other things can happen. So you always want to make sure you kind of have that fallback, if at all possible. Mm -hmm. So bottom line is this. Um, if your as-is value is higher than your purchase price, you're a lot safer mm -hmm. in in terms of you know in terms of being in the deal safe no matter what happens whether you get financing whether you don't mm -hmm. have financing because then the other thing you could do you could just wholesale right then you don't have to even close on it at all mm -hmm. you could just flip the deal out and and and, and do sometimes it. you need cash flow coming in quicker right a yeah. rehab you could be looking at waiting to get your money three six nine months from now at least with a wholesale deal that'll get you that cash flow you know that's that's coming in now well when we now we talked about values we talked about as is <clears throat> the arv which stands for after repair value once it's fully fixed up what could it sell for um Let's talk about price ranges a little bit. And nobody wants to talk about this, but I'm a firm believer um, in purchasing and renovating properties mm -hmm. more in blue collar working class areas. I know a lot of you are watching shows on Netflix, on Discovery Channel oh, wow. about flipping, you know, selling sunrise and flipping houses here. And they're doing these huge renovations on high end properties. Yep. Now, I definitely think there's a market for that. Don't get me wrong. But Pete, and, and I think you share the same opinion as me. Why is it that you like flipping houses in what's called hodgepodge areas, yep. blue collar working class areas, and then we'll explain what these areas consist of. But why do you like investing in those areas? Well, why don't we just use a real life example? Okay. Um, so, you know, we've been doing this for two decades, mm -hmm. thousands of deals. We have a whole team. We have partners all over the United States. Mm -hmm. So you think if anyone's ready for a high end flip would be someone like us, right? Mm -hmm. Maybe not. <laughs> so, and I think you know where I'm getting with this. So we just did a deal and it was at Fort Myers 
And, and, and Julie's right. We like to stay in these pockets. And I really, if you're talking about pricing, because I know you're listening to this all over the place. If you're talking about pricing, I would say wherever city you're listening to this in, take your median price and stay at that price or below. Like here we're in mm -hmm. Atlanta, I think median price is like 250 here. So in Atlanta, I would not go into a $6 million deal. I'd stay at 250 or below. The other good thing about those deals is you have a bigger buying pool on the back end for those. But, so we just did a deal outside our box. Uh, we just did a million dollar deal in Fort Myers. We spent, I don't know, 100, 120,000 fixing it. You know, pretty cool, right? We listed mm -hmm. it for 1.5 million. You know, we have like $400,000 spread. Well, that $1.5 million listing now, we're at 1.3. Yeah. So bottom line is this. There's a lot of reasons why you want to do what you said. Number one, there's a, the pool, like I said, the pool of buyers is, is a lot bigger. Number two, usually in these high-end properties, and I know you're talking about the sunsets and the TVs and all this, mm -hmm. um, there's a lot more to be needs to be done in these high-end properties. Mm -hmm. You know, you're doing a $200,000 or $100,000 home, you don't have to make it drop-dead gorgeous. You gotta make it livable, you gotta make it presentable, and you gotta make it nice. You're doing a $3 million house, it's gotta be drop-dead gorgeous. Yep, you know I mean? and the materials alone, you know, I, I kind of, this has been always been my rule. And not that I get all my materials here, but I like to do a flip where I can literally pick out all of my materials from a home improvement store. Now, I know that's crazy, well, but you don't have to sit and wait months on a, on a piece of material. You can go to Home Depot, you can go to Lowe's, you can go to your local home improvement store and literally find the stuff is needed for the flip. I mean, why do you think that's easier than, than what we're talking about with these multi-million dollar homes that need special attention? Well, let me give you again another real life example that's actually taking place to a friend of mine. So he's building a high-end home right now, a custom home. This is gonna blow your mind. The home could have been done already, right? Mm -hmm. We're sitting here, it's what, May, mm -hmm. June, whatever, 7th. The home could be done. Do you know they're 26 weeks away from finishing? Wait, but you know why? It's a high-end home. It's a custom home. He can't, go to, uh, he can't go to Home Depot or Lowe's to get it. He had to custom order his windows. Now, look, if you forget a kitchen sink, no big deal, right? You can mm -hmm. like, you know, you put a different one in short term. You can't fudge windows, right? So he's literally, literally had to put off the sale of his own home, had to put off a move that they had scheduled for 20 some weeks to get these windows in. So bottom line is this, there's a lot of issues you're gonna run, a lot of unspoken issues, things that you don't even think about. Like right now, again, we're in a world of back orders, right? Mm -hmm. Just coming out of a, a, a pandemic, a lot of things are, are, are already slowing things down in terms of the supply mm -hmm. chain. Well, guess what? The more expensive, the more high end, the more chance that you're not gonna be able to do it. Here's the other thing you gotta think about, carrying costs. Think about like on a like if you're carrying a hundred thousand dollar home, mm -hmm. it is very realistic on a hundred thousand dollar home to be carrying that for about twelve hundred dollars mm -hmm. a month. If you're carrying a hard money loan, twelve hundred maybe fifteen hundred dollars. Guess how much the carrying cost on this million dollar deal is for? Oh, me? I know how much it is, but tell everybody. It's uh, about ten thousand dollars. Yeah. Which means every thirty days extra we're sitting on it we're going in a hole or we're knocking it off our profit $10,000. Now, you may be thinking to yourself, well, gosh, Pete, if you're making you know, $200,000, what's, what's $10,000? You'll be shocked. You'll be shocked how 10, quickly. $10,000 will eat up a yeah. profit real quick. Very quick, very, very quick. Because remember, here's the other thing, Julie, that people have to realize why we like to stay away from this high-end stuff and why, if you're a beginner, you absolutely need to. Everything is bigger at that end. Mm -hmm. You know, people think, oh, commission. Well, yeah, commission is not a big deal on a hundred thousand dollar home. Eh, six thousand dollars, you know. Guess how much commission is on a one point five million dollar home? So everything gets to be a lot bigger. You know, you can wipe out a hundred thousand dollars on just commission on these multi million dollar homes. I mean, that's like money that you just like right off the top gone. Closing costs, you know, hundred, two hundred thousand dollar home. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll do a concession for $3,000 closing costs. Guess what? You're conceding tens and tens and tens of thousands. Well, also, that house is in Florida. Um, just to transfer a deed oh. stamp is almost 1% of the yeah. sales price. That's exactly right. Uh, let's, let's not even talk about yeah. that deal anymore. It's going to sell. Everything's going <laughs> to be great. <laughs> yeah, <we're laughs> right, right. Well, and here's the other thing. And this is, a re this is a reality I faced, Julie, when I got started in this business. 
um, most people can't afford to lose at the high end price. Either. No. I mean, let's face it, we all take losses. You and I still, after you know, being doing this for over a decade, still take losses sometimes, mm -hmm. right? Well, it's one thing to take a loss of $10,000 on a $150,000 home. Mm -hmm. You know, kind of no harm, no foul. I mean, most people, even if, <clears throat> even if it doesn't feel good, even if you don't have it right now, 10,000 could be recouped you know, over a fairly short period of time. But when you're taking hits, uh, upwards of like 60,000, 100,000. Let's face it, most people can't do that. Um, I just really, as, as I think about it, I can't spin it in any way that I would recommend a brand new person do a high-end home. No, no, and, and you know too, th this is something I think about. I don't mean to be doom and gloom, right? But we're kind of in a uh, market right now where no, nobody's no. quite sure what's gonna go on. Let's say I'm renovating a property and home sales just bottom out and you're literally stuck with houses. Mm -hmm. I still want to be able to, if I had to, mm -hmm. rent those houses out. Oh yeah, good point. Okay? Right. So the more expensive of the home, and this is generally the way it looks, the less the rent. It's not unheard of to have a $150,000 house, a $250,000 house, where you're getting fifteen to $2,500 a mm -hmm. month in rent. Yep. So your rent is more than your payments. Yep. You got a million dollar house, you're what? Gonna get $3,500 a month in yeah. rent, $4,000 a month in rent, and you're barely gonna cover your insurance, your taxes, the mortgage payments. At least on these smaller ones, if the mm, hits the fan, you can at least put a tenant in there. So um, areas do matter, mm -hmm. areas do matter. Even if you could comp it, like this property could legit, legitimately comps out at 270. No problem there. But the reality of the pool of buyers goes down. So when mm -hmm. you are thinking, like when you're thinking a wholesale deal where you're in and out very quickly, eh, you're not too worried because you're flipping it to investors. Investors sometimes want to fix and flip. Sometimes mm -hmm. they want to, you know, sometimes they want to rent. So let's mm -hmm. face it, a lot, a lot of them are slumlords, so they want to mm -hmm. be in rougher areas. But like when you're buy, when you're doing fix and flips, most families aren't like thinking, you know what, let me go in into the worst part of Atlanta, right? Like when people are buying houses, I don't care what what financial situation you're in, you're not thinking, well, let me just go and buy And it can be different if they've got kids or they don't have kids, you know? No question. There's no question, which again, which means your pool of buyer goes down, mm -hmm. right? Your pool of buyers goes down. So yes, areas do matter. There is no question. Um, you want to zero in into the right, right uh, price point, which Julie and I just talked about, you know, in medium and, 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 and less. But I would say in a fix and flip, not I would say, 100%, stay away from the ghettos, right? Stay away from the worst parts of town because you're trim. Here's the other thing why you want to stay away from in those areas. Um, things can go wrong in those areas. A oh, lot yeah. more than things can go right in a $200,000 area as opposed to you're in a $70,000 well, It's an easy area. target, right? It's an easy target. People are used to kind of, you know, the wrong people are used to being in there. So yeah, absolutely, uh, areas, areas do matter. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, you know, I think this was a great episode of kind of what price range, yep. what the different types of flips are. We hope you enjoyed this today and we'll see you next time.